What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Welcome to the official Monster Hobbies YouTube channel. My name's Trevor Slescu, owner of Monster Hobbies Online. Now today we have a Wheels of Fire Ravel Snap Together Kit. This is the 1999 New Thunderbird. Now this is a really cool one because this was actually the showroom car and then in 2002 they actually made the production car. So this model kit actually came out three full years before the actual production car. So isn't that cool? Now if you want to know a about a great channel that does nothing but model car videos. Now that's unboxings, some of which are not on this channel, as well as tips and techs, so you learn about all the techniques of model car building and show and shine videos and everything else. I have a channel made up especially for you. It's called the Monster Hobbies Model Car Channel. At the end of this video, I will tell you more about that and how to get over there from here. So without further ado, let's unbox this model kit first, and then we'll talk more about the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. So tonight we're gonna party like it's 1999. Well, here we have another Ravel Wheels of Fire. This is the new Thunderbird for 1999. Now this was sort of like a throwback to the 1957 T-Bird and here we have it as a snap type kit. No gluing, no painting, 125th scale for skill level 1, ages 8 and up. On this side of the box we get the skill level which is 1, easiest, for ages 8 and up. And then down here is skill level 2 and 3 but it's highlighted right here. No glue required, no painting required. Now here's the rear three-quarter shot of the model and this opera window is basically what the tops in 55, 6 and 7 had. Again, really awesome looking work for an updated version of the new Thunderbird. And on this side of the box we get a front three-quarter shot. Now this Thunderbird model kit is seven and a half inches long, has 42 pieces, is molded and red, and the decals are peel and stick. So again, very easy for the beginner model to get going or for a weekender guy just to put it all together and have it done by the end of the evening. On the bottom of the box, we have a look at the actual Thunderbird as well as the interior. And it says the first Thunderbirds rolled off the assembly line in 1955 and Ford kept the bird rolling until 97. The new Thunderbird combines all the modern hardware you'd expect a year 2000 car with the classic design style of the original 55 model that started it all. The new version will be offered in several colors that will remind the admirer of the first generation classic. So there it is there. Now let's open the box and see what's inside. So right away we get our instruction sheet. We also have these stickers. So Danny the dog will show that to you a little later on. And then we've got our clear components right here as well as the top and the body and the interior and underneath we have the chassis and then we've got our tires in the sealed bag here some more glass a lot of glass gotta check this out there's our front grille and our wheels and then we've got our axles and screws there now we do have some of the darker color components so i guess i must have been working on this a little bit back in the past and then we have, well, these are just parts trees. There's our mirrors on there, and that's a blank one. And then what is this? That looks like the top down. So what we'll do is we'll just move all this out of the way, and we'll let Danny the dog cover those instructions. Hello, everybody. This is Danny the dog, your dog on the street. And hey, whoever thought we would end up seeing 1999 finally come around? I wonder what life's going to be in the new millennium future so bright I just gotta wear shades okay let's take a look at our instructions here oh there go my glasses again there got rid of them okay so we have the new Thunderbird and we've got this great big write-up right here you can see where my nose is and then we got the car itself and the little symbols you're gonna see as you build this model and then down here we got that read this before you begin so let's go and check out the instructions picture by picture and see how to put this thing together. So here we have step one and we've got an interior tub and we have our right and left hand side front bucket seats with the seat backs. 
Check this out, this is computer generated graphics. Boy, the 3D technology in the 90s is sure coming up. I can't wait to see what it looks like in the new millennium. Now step two shows these separate door panels being dropped in place. That looks really, really good. And then we've got a shifter lever which goes into the hole here on the center console. In step three, we show our dashboard and steering wheel going together. The dashboard has the steering column molded in place and then that all pops into our interior bucket. And here on the radio, we can listen to the uh, Willennium, which is uh, coming in on the uh, tape deck from Will Smith. This is really cool here in step four. We've got a chrome windshield frame and then the actual glass hooks in and then pops down. And then that will go underneath our car in the interior for our windshield. So that's really, really cool. And step five shows that glass going into the body, just like I said before. And there is step nine with our interior tub dropping in place underneath the body and under that windshield. Now in step seven, you have to do this four times, but you put your wheel into your tire four times, and then you attach the wheels together underneath with the axles, which goes through the holes in the chassis. And panel eight shows the chassis being screwed into the car and that's where everything goes. Step nine shows our clear headlights going in place. And then we got our fog lights down here and the chrome grill. You can add a black wash in there, it look really, really good. Over here in step 10, we see our tail lamps going in as well as the driver and passenger side mirrors. Step 11 shows the tonneau cover being put on the back. Now this is optional because you also have the up to top it says, note illustration below shown with top down. If you want the top attached, proceed to step 12 and ignore this step. So here we are with step 12 and you got that top and the windows come in and then the little portholes are what snaps the glass in place. So that's pretty smart. Step 13 shows the tunnel being popped into place on the body with step 14 showing the up to top being dropped into place. And then here we have a computer generated image of the Thunderbird that looks really slick. It looks like it's all made out of chrome. I can't wait to see what the future of computer graphics looks like, say maybe in uh, maybe in the year 2022. Maybe that's stretching a bit. I'm looking too far in the future. And here we have step 15, which shows our sticker placement. Now I'll be showing these stickers at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. But check this car out. It's like so futuristic. You know, I bet in the future we'll have flying cars, say maybe around 2022, and they'll be all powered by uh, little nuclear reactors or something like that. I can't wait to see that future. Then right here we have a list of all the parts that come in the kit, as well as a showing of each of the parts trees. So that's really good that Ravel threw that in, just in case something goes missing. So that wraps up the instructions for this video, and I'll be back to show you the decals at the end. So Trevor, take it away, let's see those plastic parts. Thank you very much, Danny, for doing those instruction sheets. But I kind of hate to tell you this, but we're living in 2022 right now, and there's no flying cars, Terminators, or any of that other cool stuff. It's just basically the same as it was in 1999, just with different politics. No flying cars? What a bummer. But anyway, so what's nice about this kit is it's molded in this high gloss red, as you can see. So if you don't really want to paint it, you don't have to. But uh, what we have here is, take a look at this side. You got the little Thunderbird portholes up there, the door handle, the fuel tank, molded on front and rear bumpers. Look at that front end. Now that is classic 57 Thunderbird. I'm sure somebody like George Barris or whatever would have, would have customized something like this back in the day. You know, quite radical. You get the uh, Thunderbird scoop again from like 1955, 56, 57. And then the back end again is sloped back. It's almost sort of like a Porsche back here. Uh, the only thing missing is the fins from the 50s era cars. But they do have sort of like the pods. So this sort of reminds me of what a Thunderbird might have looked like if it had stayed this way all the way up to, let's say, 1962. Because, you know, Ford had those bullet tail lamps back in 62. So this could have been a logical uh, a way of doing it back then. I don't see any mold marks to really complain about underneath here that would interfere. There are some seam parting marks here where they had to mold the front end in. 
and the sides in the mold at the factory. But overall, I think this looks really, really great. Anyway, here is our undercarriage, and you can see that everything is molded in here. Front cross member looks good. You can see bits of the engine. There's our exhaust pipes, which look really, really tiny in here. But then on the tips on the end, they look about the right size. So let's just bring this up to the camera, just like that. Again, look at the nice detailing under here. A little bit of dry brushing would bring this right out. Again, you can leave this silver. You can see that the exhaust pipes are all nice and smooth in there, whereas the body looks a little bit rough, the undercarriage there. That would be more prototypical. You can paint these with some steel. It would look really good underneath there. Now just turn it over on this side. Again, there's some mold marks, but I don't think they're going to interfere with anything, so you should be okay. But again, this is a perfect starting point for the beginner or someone that just wants a quick build for on their shelves. Here we have the nice interior bucket. And again, you can see where it's been clipped off of the parts tree. So you will need to sand that down and clean it up just to make it look nice. There's that center console molded in place. You also have a little area behind here for the seats, just to store some luggage or whatever you want to do. Again, really, really nice. This is elongated into the back, so you could make an opening trunk on this model. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know, has anybody done that? It's a little bit tight in there. So let us know in the comments if you have problems. Underneath, there's mold marks. These may be a problem. Easy enough to get at them to sand them. So remember to cross sand one way and then sand the other and that will get rid of them. And then go this way and go this way. So again, that would uh, eliminate that. You get the floor pedals molded in down below. This little one here is not a pedal. It's actually a place to rest your foot. There's the brake and the gas. So again, it looks really nice. Looks accurate to the Thunderbird of that era and will look good on your shelf. Here's the pieces that make up our gray components. And you can see the separately molded doors, which is really nice because if you have a door handle, instead of it just being a weird shape, like in the Dodge Caravan model, it actually looks like a real window crank or door handle or whatever. And that again is really, really nice. The door panels have little lights down at the bottom, which is good. There's our dashboard. And then in here, we've got our seat backs and there's the front of the seats. Now we do have a tonneau cover and we also have the folded down top. So again, the choice is yours. There's the steering wheel and we've also got our gear selector right here. So uh, let's just bring these up to the camera. Some of the parts did fall off in the box, but that's okay. I can live with it. <laughs> Check out the detail on the seats. Again, those are really nice, real modern looking. There's our gear stick lever as well as those door panels. Again, really excellent work here done by Ravel for just such a simple kit. There's that steering wheel, just beautiful stuff. Now, I do believe this is the only model of this Thunderbird. I can't remember there being a glued together version of this at all. Look at, there's that dashboard again. So you can listen to uh, any of the cool 1990s CDs you may have in your collection. Just plug them in that CD player. I think I said tape cassette before, maybe Danny did, but that was wrong, <laughs> of course. And look at the vents on here for the defroster, for the windshield. Again, really excellent, excellent work. And then what else do we have? Well, there's the seat backs. You can see the nice detail on the headrest. They do have the holes in there, which would line up on little pins at the back of the seat. And then last but not least, we've got the tonneau cover. Now, yeah, it would go down this way with these little buttons sticking up. So again, great work by Monogram, or pardon me, Ravel, <laughs> Ravelogram on this amazing little 1999 Ford Thunderbird. And here we have our red top, which again is really nice, much like the 55 with the opera windows. And we also have the little side view mirrors, which again is a really nice touch. So turning the roof over, there are some mold marks up front here, which can easily be removed. You can see the pins where everything drops in. Oh, now that would make sense. That top with the pins in it could line up with this. So that might be what locks that in place. And then our mirrors here, you would need to add some silver paint in there, or maybe a little piece of bare metal foil, or even a little dot or two of that Molotov chrome pen. 
But overall, you should have fun putting that together. Here we have the parts that represent our chrome, and we've got this wonderful windshield in here molded as one piece. And it's really nice that they didn't put it on the body, that we actually have it separate like this. There we've got the Thunderbird grill, which would look nice with a little black wash inside just to bring out the highlights. And we also have these wonderful 17 or 18 inch Thunderbird wheels. I don't know really what how big these are, but they are quite a big wheel and really nicely detailed. Look at those spokes on there. That is some really awesome work. Now, the windshield on the back has a few mold marks in place, but I don't know if that matters or not. It all depends on how nicely that glass is going to click in. You can see some notches where the glass would be uh, connecting. And then on our grill, you can see that nice egg crate pattern inside there. Little black wash will bring it all right out and make it look perfect. So again, I know there's not much chrome in the 90s, even on today's cars, but what we do get looks really, really nice. Here we have the glass for the model. And again, we get that front windshield, which will pop right into place and the rear window, as well as the side portals. And it's kind of nice the way they did this. It's just a very thin bit of clear plastic in there, not uh, like thick all the way across and wrapping around. So this should snap in and these should be easy to paint over and hide. There we also have the front headlights and the rear tail lamps and those little marker lights up front and they're on long pins. So those should be able to go through the body really nicely. So let's bring this up. You can see a little bit of that pattern on the front lenses and then on the little turn signals there. Again, really nice work by Ravel. There's those back tail lamps. Again, very, very nice. And our windows. Now, it does look like you're supposed to paint black around in the frame there. That might be a good idea, even though you are clicking this into the chrome, because the windows do have a bit of rubber around them, just to keep that glass in there from shattering, because it vibrates on the rubber seals. So there's all our clear parts. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Here we have our tires. Now these are Firestone Firehawks and they look wonderful. Wonderful. You get the Firebird Firehawk logo on both sides of the tires, the raised lettering, of course, and then this amazing tread pattern up underneath. They're all the same size. So that's good because you don't have to think about the front and the back being any different. And none of these tires are directional, which is another good thing. Those directional tires are kind of a pain, but uh, overall, this is what you get in the kit and they will look great. So here we are with the decal sheet and I really love this chrome plated look in here on these side stripes. Again, really, really cool stuff. We have a Ravel Wheels of Fire sticker right here and that can go on your lunchbox, kids. And then here we've got the circular T-Bird image. Now this one reminds me of the Hot Wheel cars back in the 60s when you used to get that little uh, coin with them and you stuck it on your shirt. That was cool. And then here we've got the Thunderbird script. We also have the instrument panel and we've got a Minnesota T2000 license plate. T2000? That's kind of like the Terminators. I wonder if there'll be any Terminators walking around in 2022. Thank you so much for staying to the end of this video. I really appreciate that. So I want to tell you now about the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage channel. Let me move this big heavy Mustang, or sorry, Thunderbird, off my shoulders because it's getting sore. I've been doing this for a long time. I made a one day of all the endings for the 90s cars. That's why my voice sounds funny. Anyway, so the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage channel is a channel dedicated to nothing but model car videos that I make here at Monster Hobbies Online. So that includes unboxing videos, some of which are not on this channel, so you get exclusive unboxing videos. You can become a member there to help out Monster Hobbies. Also, we have tip and tech videos, so I show you all my tips and techniques on building model cars. This is stuff I've accumulated and learnt over 40 years of building, so there's some cool stuff on there. Also, we have I build model cars on there. <laughs> so I can help you in learning how to put all these together. So that is the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage YouTube channel. And you want to check it out by clicking this video right here, or you can just go directly to the channel 
by taking your mouse and clicking on this icon here. And that will take you directly to the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage channel. Huh. My throat's drying out. So until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.